Hey, Max. Hey, John. Welcome. Great to see you both. Hey, Raj. It's nice uh, to see you. Thank you for having us here today. Yeah, thanks hey, for Raj, joining you. Thanks good, for having us. Good to see you. <laughs> um, awesome. So I'm going to welcome in our audience. I'm Raj Bhargava with Jump Cloud, and we're super excited to talk to great, amazing IT practitioners. And really, the goal of this uh, video series is to just learn about how digital and identity transformation is affecting organizations and how organizations are really dealing with all the complicated technology changes, process changes, cultural changes around remote work, around security, around um, automation, all of these major challenges that we all have. So really easy, easy kind of interview here just to learn from, from you, Max and John, about what you're doing at your organization. So with that, I'll let I'll turn it over to you and let you kick off. Maybe a quick introduction on you know who you two are and kind of uh, what you're focused on in, in the technology realm. Yeah, sure. So my name's Max. Um, I've been working uh, as an IT and infosec specialist for a number of years now. Um, I have been working specifically with Jump Cloud and doing deployments and transformations using that for about four or five years now. So yeah, we've been We've got quite a lot of experience with the platform. Um, it's it's been a great experience working with it so far. Um, hi guys, uh, just to introduce myself. My name is John. Uh, I've been working in IT for five years. Um, previously, I was doing a different things. So I was doing nursing, uh, changed my careers, um, and I've been working with Jump Cloud for the same amount of time as Max, so four to five years now. Um, yeah, it's really really great stuff. Awesome. So, you know, we all know that technology has been incredibly game changing for organizations. How is your organization leveraging technology to, you know, accomplish the mission that you're you're trying to accomplish? How has it been sort of a game changer for you all? Uh, that's a great question. So the organization that I've been working with is um, very technology focused. So we like to kind of experiment and try new things. And the freedom and the creativity is kind of the core value that we kind of work to. So having something like Jump Cloud, which has allowed us to keep that expression of creativity and freedom and just trying new things while still building a solution which is a cloud focused so we don't have to worry about server management and things like that, but also allowing us to kind of keep a good level of information security control um, has been a huge positive for us. It's the business has grown, so we're working in more international markets all the time. Um, so having something which we kind of know is going to grow and scale with us has just been an absolute game changer. It never really would have felt right to me if we had deployed something which relied on servers in one region, because that's just not who our identity is as a business. So having something which is kind of outside that and grows with us successfully is super important. And Jump Cloud's always felt like it's just matched that perfectly. Yeah, just to add to Max's point there, I think during the uh, you know couple of years during COVID, I think that's helped us massively. Uh, just because everyone, you know, was in the office and we switched over to remote work and, and it was just easy for us to deploy and manage devices through that period as well. So it's been absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's so true. Like switching into the pandemic, um, it kind of felt because we already had John Cloud deployed at that point, it almost just felt like we were continuing doing BAU, yeah. which we were hearing all of these horror stories from other IT admins that we know and kind of work with saying like, oh, our organization's really struggling because everyone's suddenly in different places and we were kind of looking at it going well honestly this doesn't really feel any different to what we're used to yeah I, I think you know we we felt the same thing obviously we use jump cloud internally but you know it was the same thing we we went home um I think it was like on a Tuesday night in um in Colorado and we told everybody you know please don't come into the office for the rest of the week and of course everybody thought it would be what a week two weeks <laughs> something like that and um and literally nobody missed a beat um, at, at Jump Cloud. And so it's great to hear that you all didn't miss a beat either. And it just sort of, you know, was business as usual and, and you were able to continue working. And, and obviously that's a huge, huge uh, benefit for everybody out there if, if they were using Jump Cloud. But uh, maybe one of the questions I'll riff on, on what you were talking about a little bit, Max, you know, one of the things that we've always found interesting with technology is that everybody has a little bit something different that they want to use. They, they have their preferences. They also, for each business, it's something a little bit different. How do you feel that, you know, you're able to integrate in whatever platforms you need, whatever applications you need, whatever locations, how, how has that been sort of game-changing for your organization? I know Jump Cloud helps you do that, but 
you know, let's talk about the organizational aspect of that. Like, how can you enable your team? How do they feel about it? How hard is it for you to let them use whatever they want to use? Um, that's a really interesting question. I think from my perspective, information security is one of those things where if you kind of get it wrong, it suddenly becomes a blocker. And my philosophy around it is that it shouldn't really be like that. I believe that it's important to allow people to kind of express themselves and use the platforms and tools that they want to be able to use. Um, and it's more important to provide a framework and an underlying uh, kind of system to allow people to do that in a way which is still compliant with what your security uh, mandates are. Um, there's so many good ways of doing this with Junker because we can push out our central tools. So we can make sure that we have encryption on the device, which is enforced by a system that we know that we can trust. Um, we can make sure that we've got antivirus deployed on the machines and just kind of like those really basic things that you would expect to see. Um, and then if someone does want to be able to install a piece of software on the machine, we've got such an easy way of just toggling admin access on and off so people can come to us, request something, and we can grant it for that short period of time and then just revoke it again afterwards. And it, it's just super easy. And then if we have someone who we know is going to need that admin access on a more long term basis, we can just, again, kind of switch that out. It's very easy to have like an approval process. And it it just kind of encourages people to come and actually speak to us about what they're doing as well, because at the end of the day, I think one of the things that gets forgotten about in information security quite a lot is that we're still working with humans. The communication aspect of that is super, super important. Yeah. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, the goal here is to get work done, be productive, exactly. you know, help advance the business. Right. Um, so cool. Well, let's, let's, let's move to a couple of fun questions. Maybe, um, you know, you have jump cloud and it's your sort of core platform. But, you know, as you look out into the future, what would you like that core platform to do for you? What other additional things are you looking at? What, you know, how are you thinking about automation? How are you thinking about sort of the next generation of IT over the next few years for you? That is another really interesting question. I think things are going to be changing quite a lot over the next few years. I think IT, there's a lot of people who kind of think that, oh, like obviously AI is transforming the way that we work on a day-to-day -day basis. I think there's quite a lot of people that think that they're, safe because they're working in IT. But I think what we actually need to think about is how we are going to adapt because realistically speaking, there's a lot of tasks that IT professionals do on a day-to-day -day basis, which you could probably just get done with AI. Like even things like basic yeah. first line support, the fact that AI nowadays can actually be a little bit more conversational, it goes beyond just what we've seen with chatbots and things like that in the past. There's very little reason why an AI over the next couple of years wouldn't be able to pick up those basic first line support requests and actually provide that sort of personable interaction. I think that's what it really comes down to for me. It's the AI can do these tasks simply already, but it's that personable interaction, the human element, which is really important. So once we kind of get to a stage where we can get that from the AI, I think that's going to be pretty interesting to see. Um, from an automation perspective, I mean, automation is always good, right? <laughs> um, yeah. If we can kind of keep it, keep it working, keep things reliable. Um, I, I see no reason not to push forward and continue using that as much as we can. Yeah, I think definitely automation is something that we are always striving to to do here, um, just to be efficient. Um, and obviously, we use Jump Cloud every day. Um, so, you know, the more features that you guys put out, the more uh, interesting we, like, more interested we would be, and we were always like um, ready to test anything that you guys put out. So. Um, yeah, it's just everything's about innovation and we're very interested in all of that stuff. So it's been great. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, the creative act aspect of it is quite exciting as yeah. well. It's fun to just kind of get yeah. your hands in play with something mm -hmm. new. But also yeah. another side of this, which I think is quite important, is that consistent experience. So the automation side yeah. of things for me is really important because it makes sure that we're not kind of getting into these situations where things get missed or just kind of like human error happens, right? Like whenever you're deploying something large scale, there's always going to be that human element, which is kind of causing things to go wrong. So the more we can automate and the more consistent we can make that experience, like zero touch builds with Mac has been an absolute game changer for yeah, us because yeah. we know it's going to be the same every time. Um, it saves up so much of our time, which allows us to kind of play with new things and just try out new stuff. And that's what it's all about really, right? Yeah, that totally makes sense, right? And the more you can automate, the more you can work on, you know, kind of higher value tasks and more innovation and longer range stuff. Totally yeah. makes sense. Well, let's let's excuse me, let's end on a fun one, which is 
you know, let's think 10 years out. What do you think the world's going to look like from a technology perspective? So, John, I'll start with you. Well, let's see. That's, that's an interesting one because we all talked about AI. Um, you know, that's definitely going to be very prominent in 10 years' time. It's hard to imagine the technology that will be out then. Um, you see, back in 2000, uh, you know, you'd think that there's flying cars and like all that stuff. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Uh, and well, the flying time. cars are coming. It seems like right? yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I hear, I hear yeah. they've got some going, right? Yeah. So like all of that stuff just feels very uh, far, but near at the same time. So it's kind of hard to imagine what kind of technology they will be bringing out. All the you know AI, especially nowadays, is very prominent already. So yeah, um, I'm not too sure what exactly what to. Um, give us an example to that one <laughs> yeah well i wonder i wonder are we going to even be driving cars or are we going to have basically automated kind of uber like pickups and yeah you know i mean 10 years is a pretty long time it's a short time in some ways too but you know that's a that's an interesting everything's question. just automated yeah, yeah everything yeah. will just be automated in, in 10 years i think <laughs> yeah yeah max how about you yeah, I mean, it's such a difficult question. I mean, even if you'd asked me that question maybe two or three years ago, I probably would have said like, oh, like, there's probably going to be more uses of AI. But the speed that it's progressed at over the last year or two mm. is crazy. Like, it's amazing how far it has come so quickly, which, I mean, it's super, super, super exciting. Um, I, I really can't wait to see where it goes next. I think we're going to start seeing other kind of diversities in tech and sort of medicine things like that are going to start taking advantage of ai to kind of diagnose patients but i also wouldn't be at all surprised if we start seeing that kind of like almost cyberpunky style stuff coming out where you're starting to see people like augmenting their bodies with technology um which i know quite a lot of people are a little bit nervous about that kind of thing but i personally <laughs> think it's super cool so yeah i, I mean it, that's we're at this interesting point in history right it's um it, it is you're right it's innovating so fast and you know, let's see, let's see what happens. But I thought that would be a fun question for us to ponder, right? Because, <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we, we get kind of, you know, in the next couple of years, you can kind of have a little bit of a sense of, of what's going to happen. But 10 years is far enough where, boy, it, it gets yeah. pretty hard to think that far. That far yeah, out. definitely. Yeah. It's so I think it's good to kind of think about that as well, just so that you can kind of prepare yourselves uh, for the years to come. Because like, if you don't really think about what happens in the future, then you kind of might be taken by surprise as well. Yeah, totally. Makes sense. Well, thank you both for joining. Really appreciate it. Fun conversation. Um, and thanks for supporting us at Jump Pod. We really appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having us. Thank we you really so much. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank right. you, Raj. Thanks.